four, non-uniform pay award of 2.2 across two years, life rate of pay award of 1.1%, we agree there are still concerns about the employer's pension costs. And we are awaiting a full accounting on this. Uh, 4.8, which is risk 2.24, the Department of Diversity uh, Annual Report and our Qualities Act compliance has been approved and published. And good progress has been made against the Qualities of Diversity of Action Plan. And we're into the, the third year and we're pursuing this again as a quality excellence across that framework. And this 4.43, uh, this is a little bit of fault in fact, we continue to have robust strategies in place for reducing risk, that's incorporating the draw of post compliance processes that uh, probably adopted by the authority. And again, uh, just in relation to risk 4.55, uh, despite reductions in the number of staff within the corporate communications team, uh, we still deliver a high level of service in that regard. So uh, happy to take any questions and share them from the perspective of the documentation. So, this register itself to the appendix A of the report. Okay, that's, that's right. Any questions or comments from that? I'm happy to address it to the boss. Mm -hmm. Yeah, item on the floor is the consultation outcomes regarding the boss manager. Thanks, Chair. The purpose of this report is to inform members of the outcomes of the 12-week public consultation process on the proposal to merge the existing five stations <coughs> up to Max Kirby at a new station in uh, what was the, the, the library and children's centre site on Flagby Road in Greasby, and that would be as an alternative to the outright closure of Max Kirby fire station. The members will recall approving the proposal subject to the outcomes of the public consultation at the authority meeting on the 2nd of October last year. At the same meeting, the members approved a detailed consultation process that mirrored that which we undertaken in Nosley over last summer, which related to the proposal to close Highton and Western and build a new station at Prescott. That, uh, that proposal was subsequently agreed by members at the meeting on the, the 2nd of October. A total of four public meetings, three focus groups, one stakeholder meeting, one panel uh, will deliver to forum, and numerous meetings with individual interested parties were held over the 12 week period. But those details, details of those meetings are listed in paragraphs 18 to 24 on pages 31 and 32. The summary of the outcomes is listed at paragraph 6 to 12 on page 30 with a detailed breakdown on a, an event by event basis at paragraphs 25 to 51 which runs from pages 32 to 38 that's supplemented by reports on the questionnaire and focus group which are appendixes C and D which run from pages 59 through to 99. Just to draw out specifically, paragraphs 47 through 49 detail the extensive correspondence that resulted from the process and also the details of the freedom of information requests that were received. Appendix E on pages 101 to 122 contains a summary of the questions which were asked during the public meetings and the stakeholder engagement. Uh, meeting along with my responses to those questions. I am conscious that there is a significant amount of information for you to consider, so I'll focus specifically on the summary which is on page 30 within paragraphs 6 to 12. The deliberative focus groups in the forum all agreed that the principle of the merger was reasonable given the financial challenges faced by the authority. The stakeholder meeting, which consisted of representatives from the public and the private sector, were broadly supportive, again, of the major proposal and recognised its reasonableness in the context of the financial challenges that we face. There was considerable opposition to the merger at the public meetings, particularly in relation to the use of the Flanky Road site. 
two public meetings in Greensby were, the, uh, were by far and away had the, the highest level of attendance, predominantly from people from Greensby. And it's fair to say that they were uh, almost unanimously opposed to the emerging proposal. The majority of the people that were objecting were of the view that we should close West Kirby outright in order to avoid them having to build a new station on the site of the library and the children's centre at Flagby Road. It would be fair to say that there were some, there were certainly people who attended the meetings and responded to the survey who did recognise the rationale and the, the operational logic to, uh, to closing two stations to build a new station in a central location. It's uh, the view of officers, certainly my view, that the, um, the majority of the respondents to the question, in particular the residents of Greasby, uh, they were very focused on the, um, on the site itself, and my view is that they, to a greater or lesser extent, disregarded the question they were being asked around the reasonableness of the merger from an operational response perspective and instead focus solely on the fact that you just didn't want a fire station in what is viewed as, as, a, as, a, as a village. Once the library site had been withdrawn, the, we received some, uh, some further responses to our questionnaire, all of which supported the merger principle, which I would suggest is, uh, is, is support the view that I've, uh, I've, I've previously uh, articulated in relation to the, uh, the view taken by, say, the, 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 the views we residents. One point I would make is, is that the uh, population of Greensby is around 9,000, and there was just under 1,000 responses to the survey, the majority of which were opposed and um, probably around maybe 800 attendees at the meetings in uh, the two public meetings in, uh, in Greensby, which of course represents less than 15% of the overall population of Greensby opposed to the merger. So you can take the view there that the majority of people either were not opposed or were supportive, or at worst were ambivalent. So I, I think there is, when you consider the context there, that's as much as anything, this probably vindicates, in my view, why we use the focus groups and the deliberative forums, because what we get then is a more objective view and a more representative uh, perspective, if you like, than you do necessarily by a meeting in a specific location that, that, that is every likelihood that that will be uh, attended by people who, uh, if they're not organised, can, uh, can mount a fairly significant opposition which, whilst being very vocal and, and, and have high numbers of people, doesn't necessarily represent the majority. What I would say is that there was no significant opposition to the merger, and therefore it like the principle of closure in West Kirby or Lutton. And in truth, the majority of the people that attended those meetings were actually from Greensby and were there to, uh, to make their point of view about closing the uh, the Greensby location. That, of course, was withdrawn, which in one sense renders the uh, renders that particular question academic because that's no longer an option available to the professional policy. One point or two points rather that I would make is first of all the cost of the consultation process contained within paragraphs 56 to 58, which is on page 39. The overall cost was £18,744.50. What I would say is, and say the second point to make, that does not reflect in any way the amount of officer time that was expended during the consultation process. To be clear, members, it is a significant drain on the officer time in the these processes. Just thought it worth making that point for no other reason that there is a uh, there is a fair amount of work that arises from the managing austerity and. There are a number of measures that, you know, as you are aware, we need to undertake in order to deliver structural changes. You're going to consider one on the next agenda later. These things take time. 
and I just need to make that point now because I will revisit that point on the next agenda item. The recommendation of the report is that members note the content and be mindful of the outcomes of this process because of course that does have a bearing when considering the next agenda <coughs> item. I pause at that point here and take any questions that I would like to have. Thank you, Chair. I mean, first of all, can I just start off and, and thank the Chief and, and other officers um, who attended the, the consultation meetings. I went along to two of them. The first one was Greasby, which I couldn't get into um, because of the number of people that I did speak to, the number of people outside. And I did attend the one at Woodchurch. And it is exactly as is written here. Um, people really had it quite a considerable difficulty in separating what we as a fire authority were consulting on and what would be um, the next stage, which clearly is not within our reach, it's within the reach of the Borough Council planning issues. Um, and they did have some difficulty with that. I was um, <coughs> appalled at some of the comments which were being made outside by members of the public, which was quite disparaging to say the least. Um, towards the people of West Kirby and what their future safety may or may not be if in fact an emergent didn't go ahead. But having said that, um, the Chief also mentioned the number of people who attended the, West Kirby, the um, Greensby meetings and also the ratio of those to the population of Greensby. Um, I parked right opposite where the uh, meeting was being held and it's fair to say it was early evening and people living in those bungalows right opposite were sitting in their front rooms watching television. Now, I don't know how many people obviously lived in their household, perhaps some of them went over to the meeting. But clearly, those people right opposite, um, a very crude observation, you would say, but they weren't particularly concerned about it. Um, those that went to the meeting seemed particularly vocal, um, and quite clearly, there's, there's nothing the matter with that. But I'm not quite sure it was a true representation of the um, people of that area. Um, I think now, obviously, when we move on to the next item, that's where we have to make our decisions. But I, as a, a member for, for Wirral um, and a member of this fire authority, I'm extremely comfortable that we carried out a most comprehensive consultation exercise um, in every aspect of this. And I think everybody in Wirral had the opportunity um, to join in the consultation and to comment if need be. There was a clear willingness from um, officers of the fire authority to meet with um, members of the public, um, set up separate meetings with obviously stakeholder groups and people from the community there. There was also never any opposition to requests that I made for them to meet with all councillors and um, the Greens be what you were clearly concerned. And um, clearly there was um, uh, meetings which were held with the local MP. So I think at the end of this, um, I don't think anybody could come forward and say that the fire authority, and the fire service, and the emergency service didn't give people the opportunity to engage in the process. And, and I'm pleased about that, particularly as we move into the decisions which we're going to have to take um, in item five. So that's just an observation that I'm Thank you, Chair. I think it's important that we remind ourselves that. Uh, the reason we're in this position is because of the millions of pounds that has been taken away from the budget of this authority and that you know the numbers of engines that have now been lost and of course we know about hundreds of staff and, and, and it is important sometimes to pre remind people this that you're not going to let it will or Liverpool about closing stations because it's something we want to do or we take great pleasure in doing. It is because we're trying to maintain a excellent service and continuous and excellent service within the remit of a budget that, is, that has been given to us. And every time we go through this kind of exercise, which is a very important exercise, and, and I think everybody knows, thank you, we said before about some of the remarks that people say about you really don't care about those down the road or at the other side is absolutely disgusting. We all look at that and we hope that whatever decisions we come to, that we look at everybody, never mind where they live, never mind what their political persuasion is, never mind how much they've got or what kind of house they live in, but that they're safe and secure. And 
it is something that you know we, we know we're taking on board at any occasion. Now we have to now go on to on to the next stage because as the chief said and others have said, there is a sizable minority that are opposed to it. Uh, and, and so therefore, you know, we have to but we have to keep coming back to this because my fear is that if we don't deal with this matter now, and everybody knows what the budget crisis means, that if it goes over deadlines, it has an impact. So if you're going to make a cut within the first three months of a budget, and it then takes you 12 months, then the cut is more severe. You know, it doesn't, it doesn't take the Einstein to understand that. And so we're really pushed now to ensure that whatever changes we, we make are done in a relative manner, and then sir, given the time and effort that the Chief has put in and his colleagues uh, on this one, we're, we're yet again constrained. And, uh, you know, I, I think it would be hopes on the board just to make sure that we, we, we make sure it's done uh, and we take on board some of the things that are said. And it is no that the vocal minority uh, should get their way. This agenda item, we've already done with the review. We're all taking it off the table as moved us on. But just to remind us where we are and why we are here, it, politically, and as an authority, as I think everyone's agreed with this, in the first rounds of the austerity measures, we agreed that we would reduce the number of appliances without changing the numbers of fire stations. And that was our first plan. So the next plan was to assume low-hanging fruit, those uh, amalgamations that could be achieved. And actually what we did in our budget a couple of years ago was assume that. We've already made these savings, in fact. We are funding from capital the uh, additional staff that will have to be found by these changes. And it's changes in, in Nosley and St. Helens and the Wood and, and Liverpool and and it will move on. So uh, these are the we can't stand still on this. These are the consequences, and we can't just sort of say, okay, okay, well, never mind. We'll just move on to something else. We've already made these plans. We're sticking with our plan. Now we take advice from officers as to where alternative locations may be. Things always change a little bit, but we can't stand still on this. We just have to move on. And as we know. There may well, as we have in our briefing day, there may well be more consequences if there's a continued drive to um, move the budget down further and further and further in future years. I just bring your attention because in the report it does suggest about the correspondence that we received, if any member wishes to have a correspondence, it's in the moving forward. So, all the lessons that we received, we are there for anybody to see. And the, the report from the Big uh, Research was just sort of um, there was not known the, the sort of term context of the report itself, uh, but everybody received a copy of the records. Just just to say, we, we always knew that it would be difficult to um, identify a suitable location or anywhere uh, for the availability of the uh, land and quality. But I think this one has been tested time we thought uh, we'd never really expected the responses that we
last year. The purpose of this report is to advise members of the options which <coughs> are open to the authority to make the changes to the operational response model which are going to be necessary to deliver the challenges <coughs> which are required of the further financial challenges to be faced in 15 and 16. And I, I don't realise this is a uh, tension quite a complicated report. So I'm trying to take a little bit of time just to uh, just to talk us through this. Members are well aware of the financial challenge faced by the authority in 15-16. And that's summarised on page 149 under the heading financial contacts. But in simple terms, we need to make another £6.3 million pounds of savings in year 2015-16, of which £3.4 million pounds will have to come from operational response, like the reduction in firefighting numbers, which in itself reduces the number of whole time firefighting uh, fire appliances we can create, which of course in itself determines ultimately the number of fire stations we can take. Members are also well aware of the outcomes of the Merseyside by public engagement over structural change options to deliver the required savings. So we previously reported that to the, the authority in the report, CFO 2014 first. The structural change options are what we've referred to in the past as the least worst options and they're listed at the top of page 150 which is outright station closures, increasing the number of low level of activity and risk crude stations, station mergers, current certain stations just in the daytime only and then the use of community retained firefighters to crew on the stations. In the interest of completeness, I've included alternative options to those recommended within this report, and they're covered within paragraphs 19 to 39, which is on pages 152 to 156. And they all relate to changes to crewing systems, specifically, as I've said previously, increasing the number of stations crewed LLIR, introducing day boot day crewing, introducing day zone crewing and introducing the 10 crew. And I've explained in there the reasons why that I haven't at this point as your professional advisor recommended that they are options you should pursue because none of them would deliver a less impactive outcome than the merging proposal. Because I need to be absolutely clear members, there's, there's nothing we can do here that is going to improve performance. You cannot improve performance when you have to take out capacity. I've got to make that point again. I know I've made the point before, but I've got to make that point again now. So the recommendations that I've made to you up to this point and I will today are predicated on the least worst impact, the least impact on response time, speed and weight of attack metrics that we, by which we use to determine the effectiveness of our operational response. I won't speak to the alternative options in any great detail, you're well versed now in, the, uh, in what they all mean and, and what they are, why I'm not recommending them. I will however take the opportunity to remind members of the considerations that appertain directly to the merger proposal. They are detailed in paragraphs 40 to 56 along with the summary of paragraphs 57 to 66, which is between pages 156 to 159. <clears throat> the operational logic for the merger is to close two fire stations which are adjacent to each other and to build a new fire station in a central location. So if you can, equidistant between the two to minimise your impact on response times. The reason you do that is because in order to make the savings, instead of having two fire engines, you've only got one. You've only got the crew, you've only got sufficient numbers of people to crew one fire engine. So you want that fire engine to be in the best location it can be because probably for around 50 to 60% of its time, it's going to be on the fire station. You know it's in a fixed location. 
And what we don't want to do is to lose that second fire engine. So what I'm proposing is that that second fire engine is crewed using the retained duty system, but not using retained firefighters. What I'm suggesting is, I'm strongly recommending we do, is that we use our whole time firefighters to crew a second fire engine on a retained basis. So use a retained contract. But what that gives us is access to professional, highly competent, trained firefighters, the staff that we employ already. So that gives us, in effect, another whole time appliance. There's just a delay in, in us bringing that into operation of about 30 minutes because they have to turn in because they're covering this on the days off. We'd only use the second appliances for periods of very high demand. So it would be as a strategic reserve. We're not going to use these appliances to mobilise directly to an incident because there'd be a 30 minute delay. We're not going to do that. But what we will do is when, when the appliance numbers drop beneath a certain level, the mobilising officer and fire control will alert, bring the fire, bring the firefighters in, and then that supplements the number of all time appliances that we have. And as I've said previously, the, the, the advantage of doing that is that means we have whole time professional, very competent, very skilled firefighters to crew that fire range. If the authority were to close West Area Lockton and to build a new station, if that would have been at the Greece Reliability site, the average response time would have been 6 minutes and 18 seconds. The life first incidents. Bear in mind that extends beyond dwelling fires, that includes road traffic collisions and the other emergencies that we respond to, which is, is, is numerous. The, the scope of that is, is numerous. The average response time nationally to dwelling fires only is 7 minutes 24 seconds. So that still would have been a very favourable response, six minutes eighteen. If we close West Kirby outright, which is in essence the other alternative, because if you do any of the other crewing changes, you either can't realistically achieve them or they're going to induce an even longer delay in responding. The average response onto the West Kirby station area from Upton, because that would remain, would be eight minutes forty six seconds compared to five minutes, 24 seconds than it is now. <coughs> when Whittle Council removed the Reesby library site from consideration, they made us aware of another site in the council ownership on Sorbo Massey Road. That is the option that is referenced within the recommendation at the beginning of the report. And the proposal relates to building a new fire station on Sorbo Massey Road. I need to point out, members, that is in the green belt. I need to make that clear at this point. The site is just outside of what's known as the Sorbo Massey Conservation Area, and that's shown on the map appendix A. For any planning application to succeed in a green belt. Uh, for, for a green belt site, we would need to demonstrate special circumstances. We could not demonstrate special circumstances if there were any other alternative that were not in the green belt. Hence the reason why we have withdrawn the Greens Library site. Decisions, as you'll all be aware, on planning matters are out with our gift. They relate to the planning authority in this instance. That's where the Metropolitan Water Council. What I would say is that <coughs> In recent years, a number of fire and rescue authorities, South Yorkshire, Cheshire, very recently, have achieved planning permission for fire stations on Greenbelt land to be able to demonstrate these special circumstances. But each case is considered on its merits, and they will be considered by the planning authorities to say which is well. What I would say is, members, we need to draw your attention to paragraph 53. The average response time to incidents occurring on the Upton station area from the, the Sorbo Massey site, and I will show you a slide with that on in, uh, in a couple of minutes, would be 5 minutes 3 seconds. That's compared to the 4 minutes 34 seconds 
that we currently respond to incidents from up to. So not a huge difference and still very, very fast indeed. The average response to incidents occurred on the West Kirby station area from Sogol Massey uh, Sog Road 6 minutes 38 seconds compared to the 5 minutes 24 currently from West Kirby. So, so a longer response, but it's still it's still a it's still a lot quicker than what it's still two minutes quicker than what it would be if you responded from that. If members were minded to adopt the, the option to support the recommendation, we would need to undertake a period of public consultation. We would also need to engage with colleagues in Will, firstly to secure the transfer of the land, as it is in Will's ownership, and to achieve planning permission. And those things all take time. What I would say is, I have already written to the Chief Executive of Will, uh, of Will to ask that Will consider transferring the land into our ownership. Because clearly, if we don't have that, then, then we don't have a proposal that you can realistically consider. And the same in truth would, be, would hold good for, for planning consent. Although at this point in time, what we're not saying is that we apply for planning permission. That is something that we would recommend that we get after any consultation process and after you've made a decision, because otherwise that could be viewed as predetermining if you like the outcome of the consultation. I think in, in summary really and in support of the, 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 the recommendation, the operational logic is, is clear and unassailable. There is no other option that we can pursue <coughs> That will deliver a least impact of outcome than a merger. Therefore, you need to get that station in the best location that you possibly can. The public have already recognised that through the Merseyside wide engagement that we've undertaken previously. That's been reported to members within Report CFO 2014. We are aware that there was significant opposition expressed towards the site in Breesby. You know that we've, we've considered the report previously. I made it clear through that consultation process that if an alternative site was made available to us, then I certainly would recommend that to the Fire and Rescue Authority. What I would say is, members, from my perspective, Having a site such as that at Sorgham Lassen Road, which is effectively a piece of open land, there are no complications in terms of having to try to accommodate a library or children's centre, which would impact on the amount of space that we had for things like including partners from the police and the ambulance service, for example. None of those complications exist with the Sorgham Lassen Road site. The response times that we can deliver from the Sorgal Massey site are to West Kirby quicker than what you would have got from the Greensby site. I'm going to show you a couple of slides in a second, which will in truth probably give you a better perspective than that which is contained within the appendices. I'm going to show you a slide of both locations and then a more broader, if you like, West Will slide. There are more incidents that occur on the Upton station area than are on the West Kirby station area. The number of life risk incidents that occur don't differ substantially. Then. The volume can be attributed to the number of secondary fires and the number of unwanted fire signals that occur at Adult Life Hospital, predominantly. If you consider the number of fatalities that have occurred over the last five years, Two accidental fire deaths and one RTC fatality on the Upton station area, one accidental fire death and one RTC fatality on the West Kirby station area. Neither station is busy. Right? They're both quiet, one is just less quiet than the other. The risk is broadly the same. The risk of an incident occurring is low, the severity is high. Right? The risk is the same on either, on either area, but neither is that busy. If the, if the authority 
were to approve the closure of, of, of West Kirby outright, we will increase response times onto the West Kirby station area. The average response will be about eight minutes, four to three. It will add at least two minutes on to the response time that it would be if we pursued the merger. And it would add nearly three to four minutes on than what it is now picking from, from West Kirby. It is my professional view, therefore, that the merger is the right option. What I would ask Chair is, can we just use the, uh, the slide that we have? I just need to show you two slides and then I'll come back and give you the What you see on this slide, then, is the uh, this is predominantly the this is the Upton Station area. With over on the the west hand side of the slide, you can just see in the bottom left hand corner as you look, that is the beginning of the West Kirby Station area. It's around the if you like the boundary between the two station areas is around here. That was the uh, that that is the library site. That was the former site that was under consideration. The new piece of land which you see in Appendix A is here. So it is due north from the site that we've considered previously, which is now no longer under consideration. The next slide is going to show you a broader West Wirral perspective, but Upton Fire Station is here. What you don't see here on this slide is the, the route into West Kirby and to Hoylake. Of course, Hoy Lake is part of the West Kirby Station area. Probably in population terms, makes up about half the population. It's about 12,000 in Hoy Lake, 12,000 in West Kirby. Overall, it's about a, about a 25,000 population in the West Kirby Station area. <laughs> this road here, Sorbo Massey Road, is a faster road than Flankby Road, which is why you can get into West Kirby more quickly from Sorgo Massey Road than you can from the, the Frankby Road site. But of course, because this is all, all this area here is green belt, we couldn't consider that as long as there was an alternative. That alternative now no longer exists. So the next slide, and I'll show you, there's only two slides, this is the last slide. This is West Wirral. So as you can see, Upton, the Greasby site, Sorgo Massey Road, West Kirby Fire Station, to give you a better perspective. The midpoint of the two station areas is here. That's three lanes end. All the land in that area is in the green belt and in private ownership. The optimum location and truth would be about two, three hundred metres further down the what is Sorgo Massey Road to the roundabout. All of that land's in private ownership. There is no guarantee that the owner would sell that land to us. We're all clearly by making this land, making us aware of this land, and in principle agreeing that this is something we could pursue, allows us to then consider that. I could be spending an awful long time, members, trying to pursue buying that land, and we may never achieve that. We do not have the time, based on the fact that the money effectively is taken out as of the 1st of April. We need to make the structural changes as of the 1st of April. Clearly we're not going to do that because this is going to take a lot of time.